Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to, as you can tell from the title, my kind of post group stage reaction to A, the in real life football and what actually happened and B, I'm going to go through and show you and compare and see how well I accurately or in some cases inaccurately predicted the way that the group stage would play out this afternoon is when the round of 16 games begin uh, on fr no, Friday on Tuesday is when England play Colombia it's the last game of the round of 16 to be played England versus Colombia so we shall wait and see how things pan out with regards to the knockouts you'll have to let me know do you want me to do this after every knockout round or maybe after the quarters and then after the final let me know. If you want to see one for each round, then by all means, let me know. And uh, I, shall, uh, I shall do one. But let me quickly switch here so that we can have my predicted groups here, as you can see, and then the actual groups uh, alongside. So I accurately predicted that Uruguay would win their group and that they'd win all three games. However, I thought they'd score more than they did and I thought they'd concede more than they did. More than they, did. they weren't necessarily overly convincing in any of the games. However, three straight clean sheets can't be underestimated. Yes, they were only playing Russia, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, which is something that I mentioned in uh, in the actual prediction video itself. I expected them to do well. They have done well. I don't know how well they'll do in the knockouts, though, because, I don't know, they haven't yet faced a killer front line. Russia banged goals in against Saudi Arabia and Egypt. But, I, I don't know, I, I don't think they were really ever going to cause Uruguay any problems, really. Just having Godin and Jimenez alongside each other at international level, as well as having, of course, the club uh, first team football they play alongside each other at Atletico, just having that extra connection makes it so much more difficult to break through a defensive pairing. I saw Russia not qualifying. Uh, I said Saudi Arabia wouldn't win a game or wouldn't get any points. It was actually Egypt that didn't get any points in real life. Egypt, very disappointed with them. Yes, Salah wasn't fully fit, but expected more from Egypt, to be completely honest. Saudi Arabia did better than I thought they would, getting the victory against Egypt. Fair play to them for that. Russia uh, did better than I thought they would as well. It's always hard to predict how a host nation is going to perform. South Africa did very well in 2010. Um, we saw uh, Brazil do very well in 2014 until of course the semi-final collapse but you would expect Brazil to do well regardless of the fact that they're hosting and 2006 was in Germany Italy ended up winning the tournament Germany knocked out the semis maybe because it was an Italy France final wasn't it uh, 2002 we saw South Korea do very well although there was a little bit of controversy around that I can't quite remember how Japan got on in 2002 it's because it was a joint World Cup wasn't it between South Korea and Japan but regardless uh, Egypt underperformed for me in real life. Saudi Arabia overperformed. Russia, you could have seen them winning both uh, games that weren't against uh, Uruguay. I definitely didn't see them winning them by the margin that they did. I thought they'd score four, concede five, and they ended up scoring eight and conceding four. So I was there or thereabouts with the goals conceded, but goals four definitely didn't see them winning 5-0 on the opening day against Saudi Arabia. I saw them winning it, but... Not by five goals to nil, anyway. Right, moving forward, that's Group A. Uruguay going through. We'll, we'll cover the knockouts, perhaps, the round of 16s at the end of the video, or I could do a separate one for the knockouts, although I have already, of course, predicted. Maybe I could re-predict with regards to the way that the actual games panned out. Let me know if you'd like to see that video. Uh, moving on to Group B, as you can see here, Spain uh, running out. Group winners, level on points for Portugal. This group went nowhere near the way that I predicted it. I saw Spain winning every single game. Obviously, they drew against Portugal. I saw Portugal winning every other game against Iran and Morocco, which, uh, to be fair, I don't know. I just don't know what happened in Group B. I genuinely have no idea. Iran were actually very, very good. Solid defensively. Yes, they had to go right into a shell and not really attack for an entire game to get the points. But get the points they did. They snuck the win against Morocco. 
got a draw in one game and then unfortunately for them lost in the other but it was ridiculous it was ridiculous Morocco I saw doing a lot better uh, although that said I did see Spain beating Portugal as it happens they both ended up on five points if Iran had gone through if Iran had gone through that would have been unbelievable I, d I don't know how Spain and Portugal would do in the knockouts I'd say Spain probably better suited and played some better football Portugal did the same in Euro 2016, though, didn't they? They just kind of ground out results in the group stage. To be fair, kind of ground out results in the knockouts as well, and they ended up winning the final. But it was only by a goal to nil, and it was Adair that scored it from distance late on, or late-ish on. So I don't know how... I still don't know whether Portugal will go far in the competition. Spain, I think, could go quite away. In, in my predictions, I said that they get to... Uh, the semi-finals and lose to Germany we'll come to that in a moment but uh, I saw Spain finishing fourth losing to France in the player in the third place playoff by two goals to one that's obviously not going to happen uh, now well it might do actually but uh, I don't I don't couldn't happen the way that I predicted because Germany were the team they beat or lost to even in the semi-finals in my prediction obviously they can't do that now sorry Germans um, that was probably that I was probably closer with Group A than I was Group B, uh, but Group C, however, right. Sorry for the cut there. Um, the cat started crying at the door, and I had to go and just kind of calm her down and be like, "I'm only making one more video, and then I'll come and you won't be on your own." She's 11 weeks old today, as you see this video, so she's still not quite gotten used to the fact that I have to shut myself away to work because she plays with wires, which is dangerous for her. Last thing I want is my new kitten to get electrocuted. Anyway, Group. C. France winning the group with seven points. I saw them getting nine and winning the whole thing, but in the end they didn't, and they didn't really perform in any of the games either. They were able to uh, to beat Australia, of course. Australia drawing with Denmark on the final day, and then France also drawing with Denmark, which is why the Danes have five points because they were able to get the victory against Peru, and Peru obviously. Uh, beating Australia as well as France. So uh, I saw France winning all three and then the other three sides just completely all drawing with each other, which obviously didn't happen. Australia will be disappointed. And I, I know a few Australians I follow on Twitter are disappointed with how their World Cup went. Peru actually impressed. Personally, I was quite impressed with the way that Peru played. But they were only, only able to pick up the single victory, which was a shame for them. They lost 1-0 to France on the final day. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how far Denmark can go. I did accurately predict the group uh, positions, France, Denmark, Peru, Australia. But, obviously, the actual results were not as I thought they would be. I don't... I got, I've got France in my overall predictions winning the third-place playoff. But the way they played in the group stage... I have no idea. I have no idea how far they'll go. They really need to step it up. They've got Argentina in the round of 16. And speaking of Argentina, let's move on to uh, Group D now. I'll move that up there like that. Because this was a surprising group. And then we'll do that. There we go. Let me bring that back up so we can see the, the groups. So, I thought Argentina would win all three games. And then Croatia, this, basically this is the same group layout that I had for Group A. With one team winning all three games, then the other two on four, and then one on zero. To be fair, overall points tallies, I wasn't too far off. Although, I, I don't know what I say. I don't know what I say. Undersold Croatia in my predictions. I think Croatia were just unbelievable in the group stage. And Argentina were terrible. Like, legit terrible. Very nearly went out. They were bottom of the group until uh, Rojo scored that volley in the 86th minute, wherever it was. Hell of a volley, by the way. Messi's first touch and second touch for the goal as well uh, in their third and final game was outrageous against Nigeria. But Croatia, playing the way they have been, could go a long way in this tournament. They got a long way in, was it 98 when they got to the semi-finals? I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was 98. I saw Argentina winning all three. It was Croatia that won all three. Argentina squeaked through. Nigeria, I saw getting just uh, four points, and they ended up getting three. Iceland, I didn't see getting any, and they were able to get one, and perhaps, arguably, uh, 
should have gotten more. They did play well in the group stage, Iceland. They will be disappointed to have only gotten the one point from all three games. It's not, it's not really a surprise that they've been knocked out, but I did expect them to do... Well, I, I didn't expect them to do that well in that group, actually. But after having seen them play in that first game against Argentina, because obviously I did the prediction before the tournament, after seeing them play game one, I then did expect them to do better against Nigeria and Croatia. Subsequently, they didn't. They lost against uh, Nigeria and Croatia. So whilst I initially thought they'd be terrible, well, after their first game, I thought they'd do quite well. And then it turns out that they actually were more to my initial prediction than they were to my post-game one thoughts. So I'm sure everybody was pretty shocked by Croatia. They have great players, but they, other than that 98 tournament, they've never really fulfilled that potential. They certainly did this time around. Incredible performances from Croatia. I've no idea how far they could go, but it could be a long way. Dark horse? What? They are they dark horses? Like you always get the side that people are like, oh, that's like Belgium used to be the dark horse. Are Croatia even dark horses? Because the way that they've been playing football and destroying everybody, they're shining quite bright. They're not necessarily dark horses, or even which class them as underdogs. With regards, say a Brazil or a Spain, you'd say Croatia are underdogs. But the way they're playing football. They're almost on a level playing field with anyone else in the tournament right now. Uh, moving on from Group D into Group E. Make sure you can see it on your screen. There we go. Brazil, Switzerland, Serbia, Costa Rica. I saw Serbia and Switzerland being the other way around. Uh, Brazil topping the group. I thought they'd win all three games. They weren't able to win all three, but they were able to get uh, the victory against Costa Rica in stoppage time with two late goals. And, uh, of course, then the draw against Switzerland when Zubo got the equalising header. That was their first game. They then picked up the pace from there. They did struggle against Costa Rica to get the result, but they were able to get it across the line. And by doing things like that, that's the sort of determination you have to show if you're going to win a tournament. Um, I thought they'd win all three comfortably. They didn't. Serbia, I thought, would do better. Or maybe not Serbia, I thought, would do better. Maybe it's Switzerland... Uh, performed better than I thought they would. I didn't see Switzerland doing as well as they have done, but they did do quite well and put in some good performances. They did far better against uh, Brazil than I thought they would. Far better against Brazil than I thought they would. I saw them drawing the other two games against Serbia and Costa Rica, and they were able to pick up another draw and a win as well. So I don't think they'll go very far, although they could get themselves through to the quarterfinals because they face Sweden in the round of 16 from Group F. Yeah, this one, I think I think everybody got this one wrong, don't you? I've got Germany winning all three of their games in my predictions. They kind of only won one. Losing against Korea, losing against Mexico in the opening game, and only narrowly beating Sweden with that last gasp, Tony Cruz free kick, which was truly outstanding, by the way. Take nothing away from Tony Cruz on that particular regard. But how are you going to lose to Mexico and South Korea? Mexico's understandable. Mexico been playing some good football and look like a decent side. But how are you going to lose 2-0 to South Korea when you need a win, lads? You're the reigning champions. A despicable performance from Germany at the tournament this time around. Both on the pitch and tactically from uh, Yogi Loeb as well, the manager. Just quite simply too arrogant, not good enough from Germany in all regards. Sweden win the group. I saw Sweden finishing bottom. Mexico comes second. I saw Mexico coming second and getting six points. So I got that spot on. South Korea third. They got three points, of course, beating Germany. I saw them drawing against Sweden, where obviously they lost. So I, I expected South Korea to be better than they were. Sorry. Yeah, no, I did expect South Korea to play better than they did. They end up getting more points in uh, in real life than I predicted, but they played worse football. They were overly physical. Whenever I saw South Korea play, they were very, very uh, card-heavy and very, very dirty, I guess would be the word. They were flying into challenges and just chopping people left, right and centre. And whilst they got more points than I thought they would, they... They didn't play anywhere near the way that I thought they would. Obviously, after losing to Mexico and Sweden, you would have thought that Germany would have beaten them then and they come away with zero points and they would have done worse than I predicted. It was only that unexpected win against the Germans that saw them 
uh, finish with three points. So I think South Korea basically did what I thought they would, which was be average to terrible. Sweden were very good. Mexico were very good. Sweden, Switzerland is going to be one hell of a game because both nations aren't necessarily used to having the opportunity, very real opportunity, of getting to the quarterfinal of a World Cup. So that might be an absolutely cracking game of football. Moving on from Group F, we move to Group G, which is, of course, the group that England were involved in. Um, it, oh, let me move this up slightly so you can see the other groups too. There we go. So we can do that. Uh, where do I start with this group? Belgium winning all three. I saw that happening. England winning... Well, basically, I got this group spot on, didn't I? It might have been the easiest group to get spot on. With Belgium winning all three, England beating Tunisia and Panama, and then Tunisia beating Panama. Uh, goal difference wise, two and eleven rather than one and eight. I got goal difference spot on for Tunisia, two and five. Oh no, sorry, that's lost. Uh, misreading the table, five and eight. I got that one wrong. Uh, although the actual goal difference was the same. England seven to three rather than uh, eight to three, so that wasn't far off. And then Belgium nine to two rather than eight to two. So it's probably the most accurate I've been with any group, that particular one. Um, England's performance against Tunisia, first half, superb. I mean, if you'd like me to do uh, a video specifically for England, then I will. But briefly, uh, England against Tunisia, first half, brilliant. Second half, questionable, but able to sneak it at the death. Thank you, Sir Harry. Panama destroyed, although... They did have a couple of opportunities, Panama, that raised a couple of question marks at the back with that first team. Obviously, both sides played a reserve game between England and Belgium in that final fixture. And it was an awful game of football, but won by a, a spectacular goal. GG's, Adnan Yanazai. That was brilliant. GG's Michi Batshuayi. That was also brilliant. I know that you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that. Moving on to Group H. Let me move this up. Oh, oh hello. Move this up a little bit so you can see it and I'm not in the way. Uh, Colombia winning the group, I said yes, although I didn't see them losing the one game. I thought they'd get a draw in it. Senegal finishing second, I thought would happen. It was actually a lot closer, this group, than I thought it would be. I thought Colombia and Senegal would be uh, would be runaway winners in this, or runaway progressors in this group. Poland, I, I thought they'd only get one point. They picked up three. Senegal and Japan both picking up four. Senegal going out on yellow cards, which is so harsh. But what would your alternative be? Uh, a penalty shootout, maybe, between the two sides, held between the group stage and the first round of 16 tie? Like, maybe they should play each other again. No, they can't play each other again. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. As there is any other way other than fair play or a potential penalty shootout, which in itself is unfair at times. People say, "Oh, you know, we should have an alternative to penalty shootout." Well, then in this situation, what do you go to? Both got four points. Both scored four goals. Both conceded four goals. How do you? How do you decide that? Fair play is the go-to right now. I personally don't have any other alternative other than penalties, which in itself is again arguably unfair so what do you do they can't play each other again I don't know feel free to let me know in the comment section what you think the alternative should be but I'm, I was fairly fairly accurate with my predictions like 60 to 70 percent accurate I see nobody would have predicted Germany finishing bottom of their group and then a couple of groups were like Senegal and Japan were the other way around and I also had, uh, what else did we have? Switzerland and Serbia were the other way around. I got the spot on that one with regards to the layout. Nowhere near there and nearly spot on with this one as well. So I wasn't too far away, but obviously Germany not. Be I've had Germany down to win the tournament in my initial predictions video. That can't happen anymore. So we'll have to wait and see. At this stage... To predict a winner now, I, I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know. I couldn't tell you. Spain stand out. 
weirdly, I don't know why. Spain stand. I think it's just the strength of their squad. Spain stand out, and Croatia are very strong. Other than that, no one's been performing. Like it's it's hard to tell at this stage. Until we see the first knockout rounds, maybe someone will stand out after that. We'll have to wait and see. But let me know in the comment section how you think the uh, the knockout rounds are going to go, because. I've no idea how they're going to go either. It's been a strange World Cup to this point, but a thoroughly entertaining one. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too for more content, either in real life World Cup related or uh, FIFA related, either World Cup or by Leverkusen career mode. And for now, I'll see you next time.